Today is all about the Rotor Inspider power meter, and we dive down a rabbit hole of something I just can't put my finger on. As the name suggests, it's a spider-based power meter measuring power at one point between the chain rings and the cranks. It's a 110 BCD with a four bolt pattern on it, compatible with Rotor's modular crank set range with a spindle compatibility of 24 and 30 mil, supporting both AMP Plus and Bluetooth, so compatible with everything. The data you'll get from the unit, power, cadence, torque effectiveness and pedal smoothness. You also get left right balance, but again, given it's a single point of measurement, it'll be an estimate between what is left and what is right. It'll be close, but not as accurate as a true dual power meter system. The Inspider uses a USB rechargeable lithium ion battery with a claimed life of 200 hours between charges. Power accuracy is not claimed anywhere by Rotor. However, some resellers do claim plus and minus 1% for the power accuracy. The unit has no auto zero functionality, the optional extras I have listed here are Torque 360 analysis with their high speed 50 hertz pedal analysis mode using their software, which will pretty much just give you the optimal chain ring positioning for curing support, which is the other optional extra here. It does support curings. Rotor are known for their curing support. Price wise, $649 US for the Spider only. In Australian terms, that is $1,130 on the shelf. Putting this unit up there in the premium price range of power meters. Now adding to that, you will need crank arms, a spindle and chain rings. So the total cost of ownership is a little bit higher than just that. Today, I'm not gonna dive into the extras there of the Torque 360 analysis software with the high speed mode. I've covered that with the twin power from Rotor a few years back. Everything remains the same there. It's really only handy for your OCP, your optimal chain ring positioning if you're using Q-rings and I'm no fan of Q-rings, so I'm not gonna be covering that either. And the high speed pedal mode is limited, very limited. It switches the power meter to a proprietary amp plus mode where nothing else will see the power meter. So you can only use their app when the power meter is in this mode. It's a handy to have if you want to analyze your pedal stroke and specifically find out where your OCP is. For me, not quite of any use. Today, it's about the core function. At the very base level, is this a good power meter for reporting power? A few days ago, Rota uploaded this video here to YouTube, which explains everything nice and visually about what I've just covered then. So here's the unit in all its glory. 110 BCD, four bolt hole pattern there, compatible with Q rings, round rings, and Shimano rings, which I'll show you later on. I think it looks brilliant with the Shimano rings on it. And the modular system here, one for 24 mil spindle and one for 30 mil spindle. And the bike fit configuration, well, obviously you can choose your crank length between 175 and 150 with the ALDHU cranks. I believe that's short for Alp Duez. Hard to pronounce though. Uh, there are your options there for the 30 mil spindle versions and the options there for the 24 mil spindle versions. So down to 155 with that. And over to a really good graphical representation of exactly how this modular system works. So how to upgrade an existing crank set that is compatible. You can see it there, all comes apart. You drop out the existing spider, drop in the in spider, bolt it all back together, and away you go. Two side notes for this unit. Waking it up takes a number of revolutions and a little bit of force on the cranks. You can't just spin it backwards to wake it up to do the zero. And speaking of the zero, it requires a double zeroing. So first up, you need to wake the unit up, go into the calibration and zero it, get a result of 1000, and then you need to re-zero it again and grab your number and away you go. So that is a two-step process that you should be performing if you want accurate data for every ride because this unit doesn't have any auto zero functionality. A closer look at what we're installing today, the Rotor Inspider Spider. With the charge port up here behind a little magnetic door flap, the charger, which is the same as the twin power, which is magnetic, goes on quite strongly. But we are fully charged, so we'll put that aside. There's the spider, the crank arms. 172.5 Rotor ALDHU crank arms. Bottom bracket spindle, 24 mil axle. Chain ring bolts. Uh, washer kit. And we have some rings to put on as well, brand new rings. Okay, let's get this unboxed and weighed so we know what we're looking at for the system weight. Just the spider, 151 grams. While we're at it, we'll just do the cranks and the spindle. 
1.508. Now for the system as a whole, one, two, three, four, five, mounting hardware ah, and axle. All up there, we're looking at 846. Okay, now onto the data testing, and it is a bit of a story with this one, and definitely a rabbit hole like no other. 19 data sets, over 30 hours of ride data collected, and over more than 30 hours trying to analyze exactly what is going on. Let's kick it off. Starting off with the happy story, indoor riding with the Inspider power meter, not a problem at all. It is bang on accurate, quote me on that. So we have the standard Llama lab test here into a sprint. We've got this up against the rotor in spider. We have the Asiomas, Duos, and the Doretto, which is known for its uh, pretty good power numbers. So we can see here, no left, right wonkiness at all. 225, 223, 226, all within a whisker of each other for that. Looking good for the steady state stuff in ERG. The sprint numbers, just diving into those there within a few watts there, not a problem. The Doretto is a little bit different, but up against the Asiomas indoors for the sprint rock and roll into just riding along. It's all looking pretty good there. 265, 260, 268. Now again, it's a bit of an off at the end there. So the numbers are gonna be a little bit different, but it's all within a few watts indoors and the overs and unders on the Doretto. 260, 256, 260, all within a few watts there. And again, that's going up and down over 450 watts there. So that's happy days indoors. Uh, if you can spot the little spike there, there is one little spike there, and I have a couple of small spikes there from this unit. I'm putting that down to the beta firmware I was using on the Garmin head units I was recording. You can see there it compensates the down with the up, but that's nothing to worry about with the power meter. Cadence-wise indoors, again, 80, 80, 80. We are done. Cadence is pretty much a solved problem. Looking at the mean max power, again, everything lines up there. That's looking good. And the numbers on paper here. So 188, 188, 191, 232, 230, 232 for the normalized. Max power, 1210, 1214, 1196. Look, that's case closed. Indoors, my testing, and that wasn't the only test indoors. Tick, that done. Passed the Llama Lab test, no worries. Outdoors though. Now let's get stuck into this. First ride, outdoors, onto a hilly ride. Overall, looks pretty good. The devil is in the finer details. Jumping into here. Again, looks pretty good as a whole. But if you can just see the slight separation here and here, and I am nitpicking with this, this is a premium level power meter. You're paying over $1,000 Australian just for the spider. So I will dive a little deeper into this one. And then it's fine through here, pretty good for the sprint, fine everywhere else. But there's just a few little separations of 10 watts that I can't explain. And that 10 watts difference was a theme that I was seeing over the last month. I kept testing, 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 and testing again, four different on-bike power meters, same results of being inconsistent. Up another hill here, and we can see the unit B, there's another little jump there in the data. Again, I'm putting that down to the unit that I was recording with. And we can see here, it's 10 watts over, and then comes good, goes 10 watts over again, comes good, and then is good from there. So it was almost oscillating. If you recall back, you're playing the long game here on the GP Llama channel, the in-peak power meter that I was using, uh, it was oscillating every 45 seconds. I'm not quite sure this is the same because I wasn't seeing this indoors. But something's happening here with the timing, maybe the internal clock, I don't know. It was just inconsistent though. Another hill climb here and you can see, good through here, starts to separate, good again, good again. Bit of wonkiness here, but good again. But there's just these periods where the in spider would just be off 10 watts and then come back into line. An easy explanation for this would be, well, it's auto zero happening on one of the power meters. 
that the case is with these, the Inspider and the Asio Maduro don't do any auto zero. There's no back pedal auto zero, there's no coasting auto zero. No, they're the same every time. The only difference between these sections here where it's accurate and they're not is that I was coasting and then started to pedal again. So whether it's a timing issue, an internal calculation issue, I don't know. But this was happening with four different power meters on the bike. Again, another power meter, the power tap P1s. So out of the blocks, all good from home, all good for the first few sections, and again, becomes not good. Stop pedal, stop pedal, it's okay, and then becomes not good again. Could not put my finger on it. And the worst thing you can do is just be a little bit out. If it was a lot out, it was consistently out, done. We can just call it a day. This just wasn't consistent. Another stop start section here. This is the Bo Peep loop. I did about seven or eight of these in a row if you were following me along on Strava. The power tap P1 pedals take a few seconds to agree with each other and send the dual channel as one. So forget the little dip here, but that's into good data, good data, good data, good. What the hell's going on here? And that drops out there. Coasting down the hill into good data again, short, hard effort into pretty good, pretty good, pretty good, and not too bad, but I just can't explain what's happening here. And on the home stretch of this ride, again, same deal. Good, not so good, good, not so good, a bit wonky, good, and then okay. Again, it's consistently inconsistent, which completely cracked me with testing, and I was coming up with new test scenarios, new power meters, doing the same ride over and over and over, and getting the same inconsistent results. After coming to a dead end with all the testing outdoors there and that separation just always occurring, uh, I started thinking outside the square, well, outside the circle, to be honest. I took off their chain rings, installed the Durace chain rings, which I think look absolutely brilliant with this power meter. It's hands down my favorite looking power meter with these sexy Durace chain rings on it. Same again though, outdoors. And again, same ride again. You can see here early on, all good, all good, all good, into not so good. A little closer this time around, but hmm, uh, middle section of the right here. And you can see just a small, it's fine for the first couple of pedal strokes, the first minute or so, and then it starts to separate. And then from here on, that's actually not too bad from there. Would I call it horribly inaccurate? No, it's just a little bit out but then it's accurate, and then it's not, then it's high, then it's low, then it's doing its own thing. Uh, another little section here, rolling into home. Early on, the data was out. We're looking at around 10 watts difference through here. And then for unknown reasons, it just comes good again. Everything's happy, and for the rest of the ride, I'd give that a pass if that back end of that section was all we saw, but that wasn't the case, it was out. So at this point, I was ready to put the nail in the coffin of this one. We're done, I can't use this power meter to compare others to. It was just too inconsistent. And then my final ride the other day, it was perfect. Now this ride was a lot more erratic, a lot more randomness, up and downs, no real steady state efforts, pretty windy day. Um, pedal stroke was a bit all over the shop, but you can see here the power actually 225, 224, spot on. Now this is with the Asio Majuos. Um, again, I can almost select any selection through here and then within one watt. So it's absolutely perfect for this ride. And the easy ride home, what have we got here? 141.8, 141.9. With a lot of stopping and starting, that's all looking pretty good. So, where are we at with this? I don't know. Okay, so in summary there, where my experience has been with the Rotor Inspider Power Meter. Well, where do I start? I'm calling this one the Schrodinger's Cat of Power Meters. It's both accurate and inaccurate, both at the same time, and it's only when I observe it, we see the result. And 50% of the time, I can't explain what's going on. Look, that was four separate power meters that I did test this up against. It's in the 19 data sets, which I'm not gonna dive into here. It would take all day, but we saw a good sample size just then. Indoors, absolutely fine. No problems at all. Outdoors, something is up. And after 30 hours of riding outdoors, collecting more and more and more and more data, I can't pinpoint what's up. Does 10 watts here or there really matter? That's entirely your call. And without testing it with other power meters, you really wouldn't know unless you're really finely tuned into where your FTP is. For me, it matters. I need power meters that are consistent and reliable so I can compare other power meters too. The Rotor Inspider, or this unit in particular, is not quite there yet. I think an interesting observation is when we look sideways at the Spider-based power meter market, which has really had a shake up in the last 18 months or so. Quark have had a recent price drop. 
They've got good numbers, it wakes up instantly, and the auto zeroing on the unit, well, it doesn't even need an auto zero. They have magic zero, which means you can just ride the unit, it will auto zero as you ride. It's pretty nifty little stuff. Out of China, we have XKD and Suji, uh, half the price of the Inspider power meters. And in the case of the XKD, once calibrated, it had some really good numbers. My review of the Suji is coming soon and is in parallel with what I saw from XKD. So where does this leave the rotor in Spider? Well, to be honest, I don't know. I could keep testing and testing and testing, and I did. Every time I come up with some bad numbers, I retested, I changed something, retested again, re-zeroed. I tried to do everything to prove this power meter was a fantastically accurate and reliable power meter, like what we saw indoors, but the data I was collecting was proving otherwise and convincing me that it wasn't the case. I'm gonna to have to keep an eye on firmware updates from Rota after they've had a look at all this data, or if they wanna supply a second unit, because again, this is only N equals one. It's only the one single unit that I have tested, and I can redo the same tests on possibly a newer unit. Do keep an eye on the pinned post comment below on this video. If there's been any updates with firmwares and I've retested with this particular unit, I will post below. If I get a chance of testing another unit, I'll link to a video that I'll do on that. Look, all it's gonna take from me is three or four consistently accurate rides outdoors comparing this power meter to others. And that is the case with a number of other power meters that I have tested recently. If Rodi can get on top of this, it's gonna be happy days, but stay tuned for that. As always, if you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Remember to hit subscribe to be alerted of new videos coming up on this channel and hit that join button to support what I'm up to here. It's much appreciated. Okay, thanks for watching.